the end zone, we speak to a Scottish American football super fan heading to Sunday's Super Bowl. But first, on Monday evening's programme, we discussed a criminal case raising big issues about the Scottish justice system. In December, Christopher Daniel was found guilty of sexually assaulting a young girl when she was aged between six and eight, and he was aged between 15 and 17. But he was given an absolute discharge by Sheriff Sinclair, meaning he received no criminal conviction, nor was he placed on the sex offenders register. Today, a statement detailed the Sheriff's reasoning. It said the sheriff considered the offence to be the result of an entirely inappropriate curiosity of an emotionally naive teenager rather than for the purpose of sexual gratification. In response, the victim's mother told SCV, I am absolutely gobsmacked by this. How can he possibly know this? It also seems to be at odds with the charge which was of sexual assault. Well, joining us now is the criminal advocate Thomas Leonard Ross QC, who is a former president of the Scottish Criminal Bar Association, and Janine Rennie, who is the chief executive of the InCare Survivor Service Scotland. Thank you both very much indeed for joining us this evening. Um, the explanation of the sheriff's ruling is very detailed and runs to several paragraphs. On the whole, though, Thomas, do you think this seems a reasonable explanation as to why he gave this lad a absolute discharge. 100%. I mean, certainly it was an extraordinary sentence and obviously raised many, many eyebrows. And I think it was important that the court system set out the reasons. And now that they've been given, it's clear that there was a range of sentences open to the sheriff. I think he took the bravest option, which was open to him, and it's been justified. He set out the reasons for it. Many people would have opted for a different sentence but I can fully understand the reason why he selected the sentence that he did. A brave option, do you mean? I would say absolutely not. I'd say it's a risky and unsafe option. I think this leads to risk in the future for any kind of survivors. If this sets a precedent, then it's going to be a risk going forward for perpetrators being able to uh, go on to offend. He's not going to be on the sex offenders register at all. He's not had a conviction. It sends out a, a, the really the wrong message. Um, Thomas, the sheriff seems convinced that he's not going to offend again. But I mean, how can he be so sure of that? And that's obviously something that worries Janine and many others. Yeah, I mean, one of the unexpected benefits of the fact that people take decades to report sexual abuse is that people are charged with sexual abuse when they're 45 in relation to offences which they committed when they were 13 or 14 or 15. And that gives us evidence that people do things when they're 15 and then never re-offend throughout their adult lives. So there's two ways you can look at it. You can make some assessment of risk and base the assessment on that risk assessment or you can lock everybody up because that's the obvious way to stop the offending. When he was between 15 and 17 15 and, and 17. now he's 18, so we don't know what's going to happen going ahead, do no, we? we don't. And the offend is for two years. So he didn't just offend on a one-off and then not offend again. So he committed those offences for two years. And actually, in reality, what we find is n not what's been portrayed here in terms of sex offenders, they do go on to offend again. It's just that quite a lot of victims don't come forward. So they may have offended five or six or seven other times, but the victims haven't had the strength to come forward and speak about it. So, mm -hmm. you know, quite often we, we work within the prison environment as well, and what you find is an offender has got a long and checkered history of uh, childhood abuse. Uh, what about what uh, Sheriff Gerard Sinclair said? Uh, he said he considered the offence to be the result of an inappropriate curiosity of an emotionally naive teenager rather than for the purpose of sexual gratification. What did you make of that, Thomas? Well, that's his assessment. He's a very, very experienced sheriff. He's a very good man. He acted in good faith. He took an option which he must have known would expose him to public criticism, and that's why I describe it as a brave option. He's in the best position to make that judgment. We cannot set criminal justice policy on the basis of phantom claims which people have never made. We can't do it. Janine mean, says that, that people go on to offend, but people don't report the offence. How can we take those circumstances into account when they've never been tried in a court or tested by cross-examination? He was found guilty yeah, of this, though, guilty. yeah. And what's, I mean, the, 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 the family are clearly very distressed. The mother's gobsmacked. Is that yeah. not... If it was my granddaughter or my daughter's, I would be gobsmacked. That's why they wouldn't let me sentence the offender. You need somebody who is independent of the facts of the case, 
who is experienced, who is dispassionate, who considers the victim on the one hand and considers the prospect of the offender's rehabilitation on the other and makes a brave decision. He did that. Do we not have to take into account this is an experienced sheriff who took everything into account? I'm sorry, but I would say an inexperienced sheriff because I would say somebody that was experienced into the, this area that they were working in, they would actually know the right sentence to give. Um, I think that's why everybody's appalled and everybody in our field is absolutely appalled by this sentence. And I would say sheriffs in this position should really probably come and visit a service like ours or other abuse services to talk to the survivors and to talk to people who have actually been there and maybe then they would understand. Do you think, sh do you think the sh sheriff and maybe others are out of touch? I don't think there's a lack of understanding in the Scottish legal system. It's a difficult exercise for a, a sentencing judge or a sentencing sheriff. You cannot please everybody. Mm -hmm. All, every lawyer I've spoken to, we had a discussion about it the other day, 10 lawyers come up with 12 different answers to it, but every one of them could understand why he did what he did. Every one of them. What about the victim and all this? The sheriff said in his report, it was fortunate that the complainer, this is the wee girl, appeared to have suffered no injury or long-lasting effects, Janine. Well, that absolutely shows that he had no knowledge of the impact on child abuse survivors. For a young person to have been through that level of abuse for two years, there would have been complex trauma involved and complex PTSD. Now, a young person dissociates through the process of abuse, so they may not show signs of being traumatised at that stage because they'll dissociate so that the abuse doesn't affect them at the time, but that's the only way they can endure it and experience it. So, but actually they'll be in the fight or flight response all the time. So entirely throughout the whole process, they'll be continually in that hypervigilant state. That then floods their body and their brain with cortisol and leads to long-term health damage. Okay, um, Susan Jack from the Glasgow Women's Aid had said earlier in one of the reports that uh, Daniel's affluent middle-class background appeared to be a key factor in this case and perhaps other cases. Do you think there's any anything in that, Thomas? Well, I think there is something in the fact that the boy apparently had managed to qualify for dental school. So he had achieved a great deal educationally and therefore when you were considering putting him in the sexual offences register, for example, he would have been deprived of that. So is it 50 years in a profession that you've been found suitable for and have been qualified for, to take that profession away from you, is that a harsh judgment for an offence which is at the bottom end of the, the scale so far as sexual offences are concerned? Just very, very briefly, Janine, but the Sheriff had said he would, this lad would go on to become a valuable contributor to society. That's why he... I would ask anybody, would they want their child then to be going to that dentist? where a dentist has got complete control over that process. You know, if he does go on to be a dentist, the potential risk is huge. So, you know, I don't think we can presume that he would be a valuable member of society. I think he's already proven he isn't. Okay, we'll have to leave it there. But uh, Thomas and Jeanine, thank you both very much indeed for joining us this evening. Now, this Sunday will be the...